Amen. Jesus, we are here. Jesus. Jesus. The Son of God, the living Lord, Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Savior Jesus Jesus We love you Lord Savior, healer, blesser, thank you. You can be seated. Indeed, I am here for Jesus. You are here for Jesus. We are here for Jesus. Today, the Lord has brought to our learning the smallest, simplest sin, which is lying. Very simple. Very simple. Looking small. Lying. And yet. It damns. It damns. To hell. We learn that it follows the sinner into Christ. The sinner that is not disciplined. That is not sanctified. Or the believer, or rather, that is not disciplined. That is not sanctified. It follows him to Christ. I mean to, into Christ. When he is saved from his sin, it is a simple temptation that wants to pull him down and defile him. <clears throat> See you seated here. You might be sitting on a lie. That will destroy you tomorrow. Sitting very conveniently. And people don't count you as having done anything. But you are only sitting on a lie. That shall expose you tomorrow. A lying tongue is for a short time is for within that period it shall be revealed tomorrow and it shall come up badly Rachel took the idol of her father when Jacob was carrying his wives to the land of Canaan when Laban discovered that his essential idol had been taken, she started pursuing them. Ran after Jacob. If it were not for God, he would have destroyed Jacob. Then, when they settled, Jacob said, now, give me my idol. I am going. And Jacob was not aware that Rachel 
with him, his precious wife, had taken iniquity with her. Had taken idol. Just as you may not be aware that a terrible charm is in your house. You may not be aware one of the occupants of your house has taken a terrible charm that is in your house. It's only the grace of God that is keeping you. You are sharing the house between you and Satan. Hey. hey. Somebody said, I think in a school where he was, in the room where he was staying, There was maybe a crack in that room. And a snake always comes to sleep there. He said he was aware, but he didn't do anything. He was aware that the snake is living in that place. Where he is sleeping. So that room is for him and the serpent. But that since the serpent didn't do him anything, he also didn't do the serpent anything. It's now maybe he has something to do with that serpent. Otherwise, I don't know how a normal man will sleep with a serpent one week, two weeks, one month, there are chemicals that can kill serpent. You can call individuals to help you kill the serpent. But I say, no, allow it. So, when Laban challenged Jacob, my idol, why did you take my idol? Me, take an idol? God forbid. God forbid for you, but not for your partner. God forbid for you, but not for your child. Or not for that your friend. Not for that person. Go down now and check whether you find your idol. Go and check. The man started checking vigorously. When Rachel noticed that the father was, check, was checking vigorously, she carried the idol, put on the ground, and sat on it. Hey, Rachel, it is God that is searching you to remove iniquity from your life and purify you for heaven. Why are you behaving like this? Why are you hiding your sin? So that people will not see. If you cover your sin. So no one else may know. But you cannot hide it from God. If you cover your sin. So no one else might know. But you cannot hide it from God. Everybody sing. You cannot hide it from God. Keep on singing. You cannot hide it from God. If you cover your sin. So no one else may know. But you cannot hide it from God. Everybody sing. My sister sing. My brother sing, hide it from God. God came to remove iniquity so that you can be clean. Richard, 
He knows what that iniquity will do in your life. He wants to purify his church. Where are you hiding? God discovered your sin. Where do you refuse to confess? Do you know what that sin will do to you tomorrow? Rachel. She sat on it. As the father checked everywhere. To the point that the father said, Hey, why are you sitting down? Stand up. Oh, I am menstruating. She, is a, she was a bundle of lies. <laughs> you face a, a sin is committed. You use lie to, comf, to cover lies to cover. So you are building a story building with lies. So, oh, I'm mistreated. So I kind of, oh, sorry, sir. Lie with humility. The humility is so much that you won't be able to attach lie to it. Oh, sorry, I, I can't stand up because, you know, it's happening to me according to the man of women. I'm menstruating. Oh, okay, sit down, sit down, you can sit down. Justified in a lie. What happened? Rachel didn't reach the promise and she died on the way. After Benjamin, she died. She didn't pr prolong her life. She died on the way. Is that lie? See what that lie did. Rachel, if you go to hell, will you blame God? You will not. You will not. Because God sent an agent to purify you from iniquity. Because he knows what iniquity will do. It will short live your life. It will give the devil occasion in your life. It will hinder your free childbearing. It will limit the number of children you are going to have. Get that idol. Grab and go back and take your idol from that family. You block it. You short lived. A prominent man in my, my tribe died, was from some village, some town, some community. In fact, from my house to, to his house is like from this where I am to that door. When he was sick, well, I have been making my personal effort in a way towards him. But I couldn't find my way. Couldn't find my way. My heart has been. I want to bring this man. A prominent man. I want to bring this man to Christ. An elderly state man. So. When he was brought down. To. A hospital in Abuja. Myself and Senator Bwacha went to greet him to pray for him to minister to him what I had told me the other time he went there they had time to converse not too long I said let's go I want to see him too we went there and saw the wife we saw the wife greeted with the wife I went with MP3 loaded with messages. I went with some books. I went, I said, that, let me see how I can do the last word with this man. Let me see what to do. But when I went there, he responded to Boacha when Boacha came the other day. But the wife went to him and said, Pastor Porica is around. Pastor Porica is around. He was in the pain of his sickness, true. He didn't respond to me. He didn't respond to me. I, I, I sat down there. I think maybe we spent 40 minutes or so or there with uh, Pastor Boacha discussing with the wife. I felt the pain he was going through. After two weeks, he died. And I knew he was not really going to last. So, I again and Pastor Boacha went to visit the wife. 
to condole the wife before the burial. When I came back, either that day or the next, Mommy Linda came up that uh, the man met with me. The man that died met with me in a revelation and told me what happened to him in the hall of judgment. He, she described the man. He's a tall man. I say, wonderful. You have never seen this man before. Wonderful. He said, the man told her that in the hall of judgment, he was told, the Lord told him, I knew you were going to die and I sent my son there for your salvation. That was the last opportunity you had on earth. If you had paid attention to him, you wouldn't have come here. But you didn't. She, he now told Mommy Linda, do you know me? I know you don't know me, but your husband knows me. Go and tell your husband to tell my wife. The Lord told me that all those things I was doing in the name of Christianity was, was in vain. We had not yet known the Christianity. I thought what I was doing in my church, the charity thing I was doing, this one, I thought it was okay, I would be accepted. Not on the basis of that. The Lord said, I should have come to you, Pastor Rica, for to learn Christianity. That that is the And I know about holiness revival movement. It's only we, we paid careless attention at it. We paid careless attention. Now, it's too late now. I'm declared for hell. Oh, I'm going to hell. I love my wife. I love my children. Go and tell them that they should move to holiness movement quickly. Go and tell them and I'm going to do it. I would have done it earlier but Pastor Borchardt advised that I should let the burial finish before. And I owe that woman an eternal message from God. I owe that woman an eternal message from God. When they were alive, they are playing. Just as you are playing. You hear this thing? The Lord directed you by it. You think it is by chance. Here for your purification. For eternal life with him. You played with it. You hear the word. You don't bother. Something hard in your heart. You allow your heart to be hardened. So, you can see Rachel died on the way for lying. Sat on a lie. Pastor W. of Kumoy talk about a man. A woman came and said, this man slept with me, a pastor. They got all the evidences. The man said, no, I didn't do it. He said, okay, be undisciplined. After one year, how far was this? This woman came and said, this is what I never did. did. Stay back, undisciplined. After two years, come back. How are you? I, pastor. I'm telling you, how can I hide this thing? If I did, it's a lie she was telling me. Stay there. In the third year, he came and said, Pastor, actually, I did it. That is man. He will never confess for his salvation because of the big manism, the dignity of his personhood. He would rather go to hell. So when something is happening to somebody, you don't, you who don't know this thing, hold your tongue. Because your tongue has become defiled on other people's matters. 
which things you have no detailed understanding. Your tongue is now defiled and is set on the fire of hell. The, the greatest thing, the worst thing for your life is the tongue. Great by it we worship God. Worst by it we curse God. And curse man. And when you go to hellfire, the tongue is the first organ to shout out of pain. Let Abraham take water and cool my tongue for I am in great pain. I know your eyes burning. They are burning. And not your legs burning. What about your nose and ears? Are they not burning? Why don't you cry for them? The fire of hell recognizes the source of sin. Source of sin. The tongue. The lying tongue. What can I do for you, O oh lying tongue? It's fire of hell. It's fire of hell. Fire of hell. Huh? My God. Thank God you had this. Yes, yeah, somebody, what did you learn from the message today? Can you raise up your hand? Stand up upon your feet. Praise the Lord. Okay. Praise the Lord, church. I, what I learned this morning is no matter how the situation is, I should tell the truth. Wherever I find myself, I should tell the truth. Uh, even if the person is my friend or a father to me or a boss to me, I should tell the truth. That's what I learned this morning. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I did not say so. I've learned something there too. Though I taught the class, I mentioned it, but I have learned something there. Something happened, maybe in the course of investigation. You are they are following the matter, following the matter. When you see that the matter is not going the way you wanted, quickly you revise to say, and eh, maybe you didn't hear me where I did not say so. Save justification. Save defense. I've learned something there. Where I say it, let it remain there. Let God judge. Because that statement said, I did not say so in the case of Sarah. And something happened again. A sister from Benue State went for fishing. And she was caught by Fulanish. And they were, carry, they were carrying her. And when she called me after she came back home, they asked her many things and she told some lies. Yet the full and he slept with her. And when she came back, she called me from her place. And look at and say, see what happened to me. I told this lie, I told this lie, but this full and he slept with me. I say, see it now. What if they had killed you? You have told a lie here. Told a lie here. Yes, they slept with you. Now, look at it. So these are the lessons I've learned. Say it and allow it there. Don't come and change anything. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Two more people. Praise the Lord. I learned something from what our, our teacher said. He said, um, when you are saying something, 
there are two persons, that is two kingdoms, two groups that will say amen to that thing that you are saying. He said, when you are saying positive things, the, the kingdom of God, they are saying amen to it. And when you are saying negative words, kingdom of darkness, I also say amen to it. So that is what I learned. Praise God. Last person. Praise the Lord. I want to share this thing. When I came, I came church late. I want to share this thing that happened to me about lies, telling lies. I told lies, I think it should be last year. I told lies to a point that my name was removed in the book of life. And God revealed to one of our sisters at Gariki, this is what God revealed to her. And in that dream where she saw, she saw that when I died, then I miss heaven. So when the thing came up, I was troubled. I said, ah, I think that it's just small lies that I have told, but my name is removed in the book of life. So I was sorrowful. I called my, pray my prayer group, they were aware. So I told them that, okay, now, I won't be joining prayer with you people until I settle this matter with God. If not, I will not join you again so i went to god in prayers i found myself in that dream that i was in a very deep pit i would try to come out from it i would try to hold something the ground would pull i try all to come out from that pit so i saw a mighty tree that was there closer to that place i jumped there was a force that pushed me out of that place to come out so the first pushed me. I grabbed a, a branch of that tree. Somebody was there, caught it. I fell down to that same place. I was crying to God that God deliver me from this lies, telling lies. God deliver me. So the third time, then God helped me. That was how God pushed me up. Then I grabbed the tree. So I want to, I want to advise my brethren, if you are in this kind of lifestyle. You think that your own, oh, you just told lies. It's just a small lie. It's not just a small lie. It's a very big lie. It happened to me. My prayer group, some of them are here. It was God that delivered me. But when God delivered me, I said, I told God that God, I want to be assured that my name is in the book of life. So I, I told them that I have to go back to prayers. So when I prayed, I had, I had a dream. And this dream, but it's very long. I won't go to the dream. But I was not yet satisfied. I told God that God, for you, you to be um, um, uh, for me to be assured that you restored my name in the book of life. Speak to me yourself to know that I'm communicating with my father. So one of this morning, I was, so I was moving out. Then God spoke to me. Tell me that, do I know the reason why many people go to hell concerning these lies? I say no. He said because they fail to come out and apologize to confess of their sin. That's why they find themselves in hell. So I want to uh, uh, plead with brethren, if you are in this lifestyle of lies, please come out. The Lord loves you. Okay. You were blessed in the teaching. Let me also listen to a few people. You took a determination after this teaching can you also raise up your hand you learned you decided can you raise up your hand stand up and share with us sorry praise the lord uh actually i was a teacher myself but i learned so well from the message and i've decided that i'll I will not be talking too much. I will pray on my tongue that the Lord, I want to be talking. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to be talking too much again. I'm, I want to be very careful and diligent the way I speak before people. Thank you. In the multitude of speech, Wait. there lacketh no sin. Praise the Lord. Yes. I, in the text, 
I was so blessed with a particular part of the text. In James 3, we read, I think verse 16. And he said, Can a fountain bring up sweet water and bitter? And I began to look at it that if you have reached, we are actually sanctified, your lip is actually sanctified, there should be no time that a lie should be found close to you. No time. Not that maybe you, go, you, you told one yesterday and today um, you have repented. Tomorrow again, you told a lie. No. As long as that fountain remains, every item of water that comes out, sweet. And it must be sweet all through. That is sanctified lip. With that, I got so blessed with it that everything that has to come from me today, tomorrow, night, day, anytime, it must be the truth and nothing but the truth. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good morning, church. Morning. I want to share my experience so that we'll learn from me because this is what God was telling me that many people they are taking this matter as a play. Um doing there's a time I was praying with daddy, and then I didn't know I dozed off. Then he rebuked me sharply and said, You are sleeping. I said, I'm not sleeping. So I was very firm. I said, I'm not sleeping. But me, for me, I was like, I was hearing him. But I was praying. But I never knew I dozed off. And my prayer was not effective. He now was telling me that you were praying like a drunk person. Like this. I said, no, daddy, I was praying. So when he left, I was like, ah, daddy just like rebuking me like this. I was not sleeping. Then God rebuked me and said, this is how many of you. This matter of sleeping. Why you people don't like honing up? Many people all over the world, when they say they are sleeping, they say they are not sleeping. You were sleeping. Uh -uh. He said, how will you be praying? And then you were, you were like dreaming something. Is there, is, is there anything like that? How can somebody be praying fervent prayer? And then you, then you now begin to like seeing another thing like I was sleeping. Then God now was telling me that, that you were sleeping. And you were firm. When they rebuke you, keep quiet. Don't say anything because you don't have the fact. Anytime you don't have fact of something, don't speak. So I just want to use it as a, a, a guidance here for we to learn. Because I noticed that this matter of sleep, many people where you were praying, you say, whether you are saying, say, I'm not sleeping, I'm hearing. But we don't know that it's a lie. So let learn for me because I noticed that this matter of sleep, it is not like that. It's, it's everywhere. Many people, when you tell them you are sleeping, they say they are not sleeping. So me, I learned my own by the review because me, I was believing I was not sleeping. I was hearing daddy, but in, in between, I don't know what really happened. But me, for me, I was like, ah, but I was praying. Now, why daddy said I was sleeping? But later, God rebuked me that you were sleeping. So he now told me that when you know you don't have the fact, because I cannot prove that ah, daddy is sure I was sleeping. And me, I was closing my eyes. But God now said, were you aware? He noticed it and he was talking. And you say, no. So you were sleeping. So it's for we to learn from it. Because all these things, it can build a lie on us. But many people, it's like that. Sleeping to accept sleep in prayer. Many people say, I was not sleeping. So me, I don't know how it used to happen. But I'm just saying it so that we learn from it. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. I, when, the message, when the message was going on, our uh, teacher, you know, when he was talking, I would just pray for myself. Because most of the times, it is through anger, the tongue speaks foolishly. You know? And uh, he said, there's no, there's no way, you, you, anywhere you be, Satan must bring something to provoke you, to speak foolishly. So I was praying for myself. Outside, people insult me. But I don't react but it is in the camp here, maybe staff. At times I would not know when I would talk hard. I would just, when I go back home, I would feel bad. I think one or two person I would send text, oh, I'm sorry if my words were harsh. Forgive me. Because I always pray, I say, God, I want to be like your son. Because by the grace of God, I will be with him where one or two person have provoked him. I was one getting provoked. I said I should fight, but he was calm. And I've been praying that. So when the message was going, I said, God, my tongue, let me not speak harsh words to my brother. That was my prayer. As it was going on, Lord, harsh words. The Bible says, uh, grievous words, stir up strife. But a smooth words, uh -huh. you know, so I was praying. I said, God, help me. 
So the message really touched me, and I said, God, even if any staff or whoever, my colleagues, maybe does anything, help me to be calm, to be patient. Let me not be quick to speak. Because once they, they, you are provoked and you, you are quick to speak, the world will be so, you know, the world will be so uh, bad that you will make your brother to feel bad. You will embarrass him before, uh, before people. So I pray that God should help me, that even if anyone provokes me, I'll be calm. I will not speak so harsh, harshly to the person. Amen. It's not as if it's insult, but harsh words. God will help me. Now, if in the teaching, we were told of Sarah that said God was telling lies. God said, why did Sarah laugh? Why is God saying so? God, you are telling something that is not true. I didn't laugh. Some will say, ah, some people hold the Bible to swear. I will then not swear. You didn't hear that man tell, tell, say that God was a liar. Her, her righteousness was more than the righteousness of God. So she was more ready to defend her righteousness than the righteousness of God. Man would serve righteousness. More ready to defend his righteousness, her righteousness, man, his righteousness, than the righteousness of another person. I didn't do it. Never. It takes a person that is naked that God can clothe. If you have clothed yourself, how will God clothe you again? And that's false clothing. Yes. That is false clothing. Again, testimonies of lies. Anania and Sapphira wanted to have glory. When they sold their land, they kept part of the money and came to tell the church this is the total money we sold our land. Peter said, you mean this is the full money? He said, yes, that's the full money. So that they will go and say, yes, can you see? This man committed and consecrated for God, sold his land and brought the full money. It was not full money. Peter said, why did you decide to lie? Come, when this when you sold the money, you sold the land, is it not your money? If you decide to give nothing to God, what, what is it? We won't say you are sinning, although you may have to pay tithes. You won't say you are sinning. You want to show consecration and you are coming to tell lies. You didn't lie to man. You lied to God. The Lord will open the register for you. The types of lies you told against him. You don't know the God of truth. This truth you are saying, even if it's against yourself, God will use it to convert many people in the world. And bless you. Because you gave him an instrument to save others. By telling the truth about yourself. The story of David who committed immorality is a blessed story for whoever fell into immorality. God forgave David. David even sent to kill Uriah in the war. God forgave him. That is put there and human beings go there to glean from it. So that they too can purify themselves before God. They have hope. But you cover your own truth. Have you done God a service? Have you done God a service? You have not. Now, the last thing I want to say. A woman confessing witchcraft now said, When you tell a lie as a Christian 
you reduce your power before Satan. Because you can pray well. When you commit such a sin, Satan comes before God. This one just told lie now. Which prayer are you going to be answering for him? Which prayer are you going to answer? You didn't hear that Satan is accused of the brethren? And as a lawyer, he is using every fact, every point to hit against his enemy. And God sees a judge. Will not the God of all the earth do right? If there's judgment between you and Satan, and Satan scores, God will give a mark against you. And that reduces your authority before God, before man, and before Satan. The Lord build energy into you. Sanctify you from lying. Deliver you completely from the spirit of lie. Break falsehood in your life. Let's rise up upon our faith and worship. Give me that old time religion. I need that old time religion. It is good. Father, give me that old time. Jesus, give me that. Lying prospers in the government. It is what the government needs to give you money. To give you promotion. It is good for John and Peter. But follow the old time religion of holiness and righteousness. It will be good for you. It was good for John and Peter. Father, give me that old time religion. Give me that. I need that. It was good for Mary and Martha. Father, give me that old time. Re Jesus, give me that old time. I need that old time religion. It is good. Father, give me that old time religion. Give me that. I need that. It was good for Paul and Silas. It was good for Paul and Silas. It is good. It was good for Paul and Silas. Lying in business. Oh, many hope on it because it gives prosperity. It's a lie. It was good for Paul and Silas. Righteousness is what is good for your life. It will prolong your life. Father, give me that old time. Jesus, give me that. I need that old time religion. It is good. Father, give me that old time religion. Give me that. I need that.
close your eyes and really spend time to pray. Father, lie reduces my personality and dignity before my children, before my husband, before my wife, before my neighbors, before my servants, before my masters. Lord, purify my life. I don't want to lie. Take away lying lips from me.